This is just a thought. Up at number 31, Christina Stead and her really bad moods. Good evening, or whatever time it is when you listen to this. How are you? I hope you're doing good. Today we're going to talk about me. I get in moods. I get hangry, I get snappy, I get irritable. I swing pretty far and hard and I see things in black or white. I used to have problems with rage and I definitely still get angry. Anger is a secondary emotion and a signal that we're feeling another emotion that we're resisting. When I feel angry, it's helpful for me to remember that I am safe because 99% of the time I actually am safe. I can be calm. I can meet my own needs. All my feelings are mine and I am responsible for them. These are the thoughts I remind myself of when I want to freak out. And my black journal. It's the favorite thing at my house. My family loves it. (laughs) These days when I start to get irritable, they say sweetly, Would you like me to grab your black journal for you, Mom? Getting a little snappy. And it helps. It seriously helps. My mom brought it to my attention the other day that sometimes it's hard to write in our black journals. Sometimes all we can do is angry scribbles because the emotion we're feeling is so strong. But it still helps. Even with all that, I've been in a slump the last few weeks. I felt defeated, overwhelmed, and anxious. And a few weeks ago, I went to my friend's house and I sobbed nonstop for like two hours. (laughs) All my other friends gathered around me in their own special ways and ministered to me. So I thought that this would be a great time to talk about some things that are important to address, specifically our mental health. I podcast in large part to help others grow and gain tools to support their physical and mental health as I navigate the road myself. My hope is these podcasts will be like Karen's on a trail and will help make other parents journey through parenthood and life a little smoother and a little more joyful. And maybe somebody needs to hear the stuff the way I say it. We are all so connected. I heard a story about a bridge builder who built bridges as he traveled, leaving them behind, never to see them again. And someone asked him why he spent so much time and energy building bridges that he would never use or see again. I'll just read it for you. The Bridge Builder. By Will Allen Drumgool. An old man going a lone highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said. There followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. These podcasts are my bridges for you. I'm grateful for the many people who have built tons of different bridges that I've crossed over. Bridges of homes and paved roads and cars and washers and dryers and so many things I enjoy and use and benefit from. I hope we can all continue to build bridges for each other. I wonder what bridge you will build. I need you, friend. This world needs you. We need your strength and your weaknesses and your quirks and your ideas. We need you. Please don't let your brain believe anything else. Stick it on your mirror. Stick it on your phone. I matter. What I contribute is valuable. After my big sob session, one of my friends sent me this. Stress is who you think you should be. Peace is who you are. And I realized it's true. I get stressed when I start resisting what is and feeling shame about who I am. When I'm not meeting my own needs, I get irritable fast. 
the solution. I pay attention to me. I pay attention to the emotions I'm feeling and the messages they're trying to get through to me. Sometimes I feel like a victim and I react and other times I become the hero in my story. And I use the tools I have available to cope and fix my problems. I see doctors and therapists and psychiatrists. I talk to my friends. I walk or run and bike for a minimum of 35 minutes every day. I try to stretch or do yoga. I eat mostly low FODMAP or paleo, which are different, but some days my body has different needs. I avoid sugar and gluten and dairy. I don't drink coffee or caffeine or alcohol. I try to drink water first thing in the morning after I go to the bathroom and then about 10 minutes before I eat and right before I go to bed, I try and drink some more water. I try to go to the bathroom immediately when I realize I need to. I journal my thoughts when I feel emotionally overwhelmed. I rest when I'm tired. I try to do restful things before bed. I plug my phone in away from me when I'm ready for bed and I try not to stay up past 10 p.m. I avoid social media. I hardly ever get on these days, and when I do, I choose not to be on longer than 10 minutes. I go with my gut when I'm scheduling. If my gut says no, I'm learning to listen. I look for opportunities to laugh and play. I get down on my knees and I pray. I get priesthood blessings, and I've seen miracles from priesthood blessings. I walk barefoot outside in the dirt, and I get lots of sunshine. I don't watch scary, intense, or depressing movies or read those kind of books. I track my period and my moods. Some days my moods fluctuate more than others. I have a chart that's helped me track my moods. I track them on the same app I track my period and it works really well for me. Um, it's a mood scale and it's specifically for bipolar disorder, but I found it really helpful for me to just cue in. You know, in the morning I woke up feeling like a five, but by the afternoon, I was down to a three or a two or a one. And then in the evening, I worked back up to a four or however the the day went. But I will post that mood scale in the disc, in the details below in case you'd like to see it. I didn't realize it at the time, but after my babies were born, I dealt with postpartum depression I had no idea that what I dealt with, all that pain and fear and anger, were not my fault. And they could have been helped and relieved. I hope if you or someone you know is dealing with these symptoms that you will get help. There are a couple of charts and comparisons that I like. Um, they'll, they'll be posted in the details below as well. Since my days of postpartum depression, I've dealt with other mental health issues too. Last year, I was diagnosed with a branch of bipolar disorder, and even though it was a little intimidating and scary at first, it's been a huge blessing for me. I feel a lot like Selena Gomez, who was also diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I like how Selena puts it. She said it was really freeing to have the information about my mental health diagnosis, that it made me really happy because I started to have a relationship with myself, and I think that's the best part. She added that she's the happiest she's ever been. And she also said, after years of going through a lot of different things, I realized that I was bipolar. And so when I got to know more information, it actually helps me. It doesn't scare me once I know it. Close quote. For me, it's been similar. I realized that I'm still me, no matter what labels I have. My mental health affects me, but it doesn't define me. I still have a choice in everything I do. And I'm still as much me as I was before I had a diagnosis. But now I understand myself so much better and I have a lot more compassion for myself and for others. Selena also remembered how her mother helped her get over a big fear when she was younger. She says, when I was younger, I was scared of thunderstorms and my mom bought me all these different books on thunderstorms saying, the more that you educate yourself on this, the more that you're not going to be afraid. And it completely worked. And while learning more about her diagnosis has helped improve her emotional well-being, one major change has also made a difference. Staying offline. She says, I haven't been on the internet in four and a half years. It's changed my life completely. I'm happier. I'm more present. I connect more with people. It makes me feel normal. Close quote. Since starting my mental health journey, I too can say I'm happier than I have ever been. I no longer wake up sick, crying, and dreading the day, but instead I wake up most days feeling grounded and centered and happy. But I still have down times. And I do my best to show up as the hero because I'm a success story and so are you. 
Good days and bad days, we are priceless no matter what we did or didn't do. And I know that because I've decided that. I have two more wishes for us all. Be a warrior, not a worrier. And if you're going to quit anything, quit making excuses. You've got this. This is Christina Stead. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a disciple of Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves me. And he loves us. This is just a thought.